things that we can and hopefully will extrapolate from our text today that according to verse 11 covered just three months in the life of Paul. They were on this island, the island of Malta, for three months and Luke chooses to cover only two events of miraculous healings, but the two that he covered tells the whole story because after Paul prayed for Publius sick dad, his sick father, Luke tells us that people brought everybody who was sick. And God healed them all. Woo! When you talk about healing, it means God wants to heal someone today. Amen. Among the things that I want to hope to extrapolate, I hope that we will conclude that we serve a God or the God who keeps his word. Amen. He keeps his word. What the Lord says, the Lord will do. The God of the Bible said this to the prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and uh, verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten. Everybody say hasten. Hasten my word to perform it. The word hasten literally means to watch over, to guard. It is to keep close watch on something or on someone. Hasten here is the attitude. It is when one have set their minds on doing something. We serve a God who watches over his word to perform it, literally to accomplish or to complete what he said he would do. What a mighty God we serve. Numbers um, chapter 23 and verse 19 says, God, speaking of the God of the Bible, is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Whatever God says, the Lord will bring it to pass. The Lord said to the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 12 and verse 25, he says, for I am the Lord. I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord God. What God says, the Lord will do. He keeps his promises. Now the question is, why is this germane to our text? The reason why this is so important to the text 
is because the Lord had made certain promises to the apostle, which included him going to Rome and appearing before Caesar. In Acts chapter 18 and verse 9 and 10, God lets Paul know that no harm would come to him. The Bible says, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Here's what he says, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to harm thee. For I have much people in this city. He said, no one in Corinth will be able to stop you because I have souls in the city and I want those souls saved. In Acts chapter 23 and verse 11, Paul said this, and following and the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. You got to preach and testify of me in Rome. Paul hadn't made it to Rome yet. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 27, verse um, 23 and 24 says, Paul says, and we talked about this last time, for that stood by me, this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God have given thee all them that sail with thee. This is why I emphasized in the reading of the text that all 276 who were on board were spared. The Hebrew writer says this about the God of the Bible. He says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17 through 18, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by oath, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, that he might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. In other words, if you've accepted Jesus, and if you are suffering some things because you've accepted Jesus, and if you are being persecuted because you've accepted Jesus. And the promises that Jesus made you have not come to pass yet. He said, so that you will have strong comfort, strong consolation. He says, I want you to know that by two immutable, two unchangeable things, it is impossible for God to lie. What are the two Immutable things. I'm glad you asked. In verse 13, the first immutable thing is God himself. It says for, this is verse 13 of Hebrews chapter 6. For when God made promises to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. He said, on the authority that I am God, I'm going to do thus and so. Praise the Lord. That's unchangeable. God cannot lie. What the Lord has said, the Lord cannot not do. And then, uh, based on who he is, in verse 16, the other immutable thing was the oath that he made. Verse 16 of uh, chapter 6 of Hebrews says, For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation.
confirmation is to them the end of all strife. That is, when a man puts his hand on the Bible and swears or affirms to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, then he is under oath. And what he says is supposed to be truthful and it's supposed to be reliable. And if he lies under oath, then he can be put away. Verse 17 says, Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, says he confirmed it by an oath. So the oath that he confirmed and the fact that he confirmed it on his person, on his identity, tells us that we serve a God who cannot lie. Somebody said the Lord can do anything but fail. Well, I'll tell you something he can't do. He can't lie. And I'll tell you something else the God of the Bible cannot do. He cannot not exist. He is the God of necessary existence. This is why the scientists fall short. This is why the secularists fall short. Because they cannot, through science and through man-made philosophies, answer the greatest question that exists. What is that question? Here's the question. Why is there something rather than nothing? Thinkers ponder these things. Somebody said, I've never thought about it. Thinkers. Ponder these things. Why is there something rather than nothing? Science can't answer that question. Biology can't address the question. Human philosophies, secularism can't answer that question. The answer to the question is that there has to be a God. There has to be a supreme being. There has to be someone who decided, I'll make me a world. I will make a universe. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is why there is something rather than Nothing. Can I get a witness? Uh, they want you to believe that some gas has exploded. That ain't the dumbest thing ever. Some gases, the Big Bang Theory. Some gases exploded. Where did the gas come from? What made them explode? Gases exploded. And, ex and, and what we had, when, when nothing exploded, nothing exploded, into a sophisticated, well-organized universe. That's about like you thinking that you can go up on the top of a building with a wheelbarrow full of bricks and just empty the wheelbarrow and the bricks land and form a house or a supermarket or a, uh, a mall. No, 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 no. The only answer to these questions, because of the intelligent design of the universe, that there has to have to be uh, been an intelligent designer. This watch is too sophisticated. This date just watch. Give time, date, and everything else. Day. It's too sophisticated to assume that it made itself. The hands on the watch suggest a watchmaker. The human body is too sophisticated. It's too strong and it's too weak to suggest that it came from gases exploding. Oh, no. Everything you see points to the fact that there is a God. 
You got to work hard. You got to have a whole lot of faith. I mean a whole lot of faith. A whole lot of faith to believe that there's no God. It takes about this much faith to believe that God exists. But to believe there's no God, you got to look past the sun and the moon. You got to look past the fact that the, the seasons come every year. The sun is up there every day. Night comes out every night. Things go on. Praise the Lord. Nature runs its course. You got to, you got to ignore all of that. To believe that there is no intelligent designer. Not only is he intelligent, but he's moral. How do we know that God is a moral God? Because all human beings expect to be treated morally. He built that, he built that in us. None of us expect, when you leave here and go to the Go to get dinner. You expect to walk in to wherever you're going to eat at and get cussed out. You don't expect when you go to the store that, that someone would treat you in an immoral way. People are moral. That's because there's a moral designer who made human beings. We were made in his own image. Then Darwin came with his theory of evolution. And people began to buy that we evolved from some amoeba, that we, something climbed out of the water. And then, and then uh, 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 you know, black folk get rubbed the wrong way when you try to tell us we came from monkeys. <laughs> Amen. Don't call me a monkey. <laughs> you know we don't like that. There is a God. The text shows that Paul was not only heaven directed, but that he was heaven protected. He couldn't die because God promised him, you got to get to Rome. You have to appear before Caesar. You recliding can come up. The storm can come up, the winds can blow, the rains can fall. But you got to appear before Caesar. And nothing can stop you until you appear before Caesar. Not because you're made of some supernatural material. Not because you're a superman. But because I'm God. And I told you that I'm going to bring you before Caesar. So I hope today you leave knowing that you serve a God who keeps his word. Another thing that I wish to extrapolate or conclude is that there is an intrinsic value. You all won't say amen on this one. An intrinsic value. In active, practical, everyday helpfulness. That that uh, that, 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 that 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 something come good comes out of having the proper perspective. You know, folk are getting mad. Because the laws have been tightened so that able-bodied people can't get welfare. Able-bodied people shouldn't. Indefinitely. Get a handout. You're able-bodied. And, and see, the reason why I bring these things up, that Bible that's in your lap, Says the same thing. See, people want you to think, again, minus scripture. Now, what are you going to do when you argue that able-bodied people still should get a check from the government? What are you going to do with this? 
uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 3 and verse 10 that says, Even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if a man, if any would not work, neither should he eat. Now, what you going to do with that? Are you going to ignore it and just pretend that it's not in the Bible? Well, now, if you ignore this particular part of the Bible, what else are you going to ignore? If we can't trust God when it comes to who should be fed, what else should we dis distrust God with? There's something to be said, saints. To just, uh, you, you, you may not get happy. To just being a practical, saved, sanctified believer. I'm headed somewhere. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 16 says, Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? And be not over much wicked, and neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before the time? This, 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 these two scriptures gives us great warnings. One warns us, don't be too saved. Don't be so heavenly bound that you are no earthly good. Amen. When you go to work on your job, work. Do the job. Do the job. Praise the Lord. That, that ain't, unless you're hired to be spiritual. Do the job. Well, I was just reading my Bible and they let me go. Well, were, were, were you at, on a time, at a time where you could do that? Well, no, but the Lord had led me. Amen. Be not over much righteous. Don't, don't be too saved. Amen. Said so because it says when you're like that, uh, uh, and then don't think that you're too smart. Don't think you're smarter than everyone else. He says, because here's what happens when people get like this. They, they destroy themselves. And then it says this about those who, uh, you know, who are wicked. I've heard preachers say, you know, if I'm not going to serve the Lord, then I'm going to go to hell in style. And they've encouraged people to send up a storm. The Bible says, be not overmuch wicked. Neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou destroy? Why should you die before the time? Even if you're not saved yet, don't go out and be a fool. Well, I'm going to join the gang. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to rob the. I'm going to rob the bank. I'm going to run with whoever I want to. I'm going to smoke all the dope I want to smoke. I'm going to do all the drugs. I'm going to do whatever I can. You're going to destroy yourself. That's what you're going to do. You're going to mess up your own life. And then if you live to get saved, you will have done so much damage. To your name and to your body. You have done so much damage to your income making potential. That you may never be what you could have been. Never be who you could have been. That's not good advice. Oh, I'm going to go out and just, I'm going to go out and screw up a storm. I'm going to get all the women that I can. I'm going to get all the men that I can. You'll get all the disease that you can also. You'll get all kinds of problems. And then when you get right, Getting right doesn't alleviate the consequences to many of these things. I'm preaching good. I'm, I'm preaching better than you were saying amen. There is something to be said for just being a regular, everyday person. Have you noticed, it seems like to me, the growing trend and it's bad amongst preachers. Everybody wants to be a star. One, one thing about it now, the, the, the invention of social media have shown 
Oh, I'm not going to hit it hard. I'm not going to hit it hard because I, I do want somebody left to preach to. But it has shown that we have a star complex. Some of some people's social media page, every picture is a different angle of them. I told them the other Thursday night, God told me to tell you, you've, you've exhausted all of the angles. Lose five pounds, there's your picture. Gain 20 pounds, there's a picture. Hair up, there's a picture. Hair down, there's a picture. Oh, my Lord, we're in love with our own image. And uh, we're just stars. We're just stars. And when you get like that, you can't take life in stride. Because you become a legend in your own mind. Notice in our text that Paul could have been disgruntled because of this further delay in reaching Rome. Here we go again. There's another delay. Instead, he took the disaster in stride. He didn't sit on the beach grumbling with the survivors about why this difficulty has happened. Why did this storm have to happen to me? That is never a good question for you to ask. For it implies that you think that it should have happened to someone else. But why did uh, my so-and-so my loved one have to die. Well, loved ones die. Everybody's loved one's going to die. Matter of fact, you're going to die. I'm going to die. Praise the Lord. God has his timing. Instead of Paul uh, sitting back, he showed the role or the dimension that active, practical helpfulness plays. Because notice this. The text tells us that uh, Paul, instead of complaining, was out gathering wood also to bring to the fire. He had already swam to shore. Because I'm telling you, if you, if you read, I, I won't do it for time's sake, but if you read verse 39 and down, you'll see that uh, uh, it was by the grace of God. Uh, verse 39 in chapter 27, it says, And when it was day, Lord help me. <laughs> and when it was day, they knew not. I said I wasn't going to read. Uh, they knew not. Uh, I'm going to read it fast. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and, and when it was day, they knew not the land. They didn't know that they were looking at the coastline of Malta. But they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible uh, to thrust uh, uh, the ship, thrust in the ship. That is somehow, if we could just uh, get there, and they were concerned that the rocky crags would, the ship would be thrown up against one of them and destroyed. And when they had taken up the anchor and they committed themselves to the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward the shore, they're out of control now, and falling into a place where two seas met. This was very choppy water. They ran the ship aground. And the forepart struck fast and remained unmovable, but the hind part was broken with the violence of the waves. Look at this. The ship was broken in half. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. With the ship broken, the soldiers knew that the prisoners got away, that their lives would still be taken under Roman law. So they said, let's kill Paul 
Aristarchus, and Luke. But the centurion, you remember Julius, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they, uh, that, that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. Swim for your lives. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. After going through all of that, Paul could have been complaining. It's still raining. It's still cold. But no, he said, you know what? They made a fire for us. The people have received us. Let me do my part to get the firewood. Let me, let me, let me work. See, Paul worked. Saints, there's a value in working. God made man to work. Before God gave man a wife, brethren, God gave man a job before God created the institution of religion. God created the institution of work. God, and you know, God is not like IBM. God is not like some of these uh, companies today. Amen. Uh, God is not like uh, the place where you work because you work for the most part, five days a week, eight hours a day. That's not the way God hired Adam. When God hired Adam, God looked at him and said, seven days thou shalt work. Then gave him the Sabbath day off. Said, but you're going to work. Work. We're made for work. Amen. Sometimes... To black folk, we're not told to work. You talk to other people, whether they're Asians, white folk, not all, they're, they're exceptions, but most people, they drill work into their own people. We tell our people, don't work too hard. Don't work too hard. Let me tell you something. You can't get ahead without working. And most of you, let me, let, me, let me deviate just for a minute. Now, most of you are at that place in life, for age-wise, where you got to get it. Now, 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 what the husband and wife need to do, y'all got to be on one accord because if he's out working and trying to make it happen, you, you can't be home talking about, praise the Lord, uh, uh, he's gone too much. Because you can't make, no, unless you got a job at home, you can't make money just sitting there. That, 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 it, it will shift, and I know there are exceptions, but it will shift, it will shift. But, but nothing comes without sacrifice. See, we're trying to pretend, you know, I, I, I'm amused at all of these balance uh, discussions we have. How do you get balance? How do you get balance? How do you get balance? The truth is, everybody knows, the truth is in life, there will never be no perfect balance you know, in life, somebody, things come at a sacrifice. And what happens is God will, it, it'll turn after a while, and it, 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 the Lord will fix it where you'll be home sometimes. But you got to understand that if you're going to, to have anything, if you're going to succeed in this world, you got to be willing to work. Work, work, work. Go to work. Praise the Lord. Come to church on Sunday, but go to work. Patrick Wooden 6 and 7 said, He that worketh doeth goodeth. I'm amazed at the people who don't want to work. Men who don't want to work. Women who don't want to work. Husbands who don't want their wife to work. Well, you can't find many of them. But wives who don't want their husbands to work. If you're going to have something, why you have your strength? You got to work. Oh, I got to finish this sermon. I'm taking too long. Paul worked. Paul met 
Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 18, verse 1 through 3, working. He was a tent maker. And he met two men, two, a man and his wife, and they became great ministry partners because he understands working. Often our best opportunity to share our faith is the result of our involvement and caring for people in unspectacular ways. What happened to Paul? He wasn't doing something as spectacular as praying a prayer. He wasn't doing something as spectacular as casting out a devil. Paul was gathering wood. The mighty apostle having swam for his life, been in the worst storm, and yet he understood that there was a role for him to play, that he had to work. Glory to God. I'm going to wrap this up because I feel like I'm preaching to some Presbyterians today. Also, I hope to show you how previous, how previous, Crystal, how previous God is. Thank God for my first assistant. You preached Thursday night, man. Thank you, sir. Awesome preacher. And he gave me some good news today uh, some, that, that just brought tears to my eyes. We, we're not going to announce it yet, but that's some good things. God is opening doors uh, for us to reach souls. Amen. Don't try to figure it out because you can't. Uh -huh. But I want to talk to you about how previous God is. David said this about the previousness of God. Psalms 23 verse 5 to 8 clause says, He prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemy. What is that talking about? When the farmer, when the shepherd is feeding the sheep in the valley during the summer months. He knows that the sheep are going to eat all that grass. So he goes up in the tablelands and sows seeds up there so that when the supply down in the valley is gone, that he has already made a way for them to eat because he went up into the mountains, into the tablelands, and sowed seeds. I want you to know here on Sunday morning, God have already gone into Monday. God have already gone into a 2020 should the Lord delay his coming. Hallelujah. The Lord have already gone ahead of you and already provided everything that we need because he's previous. My God, to be previous, praise the Lord, is to go before. Amen. To occurring before in time. God does things. Before they're needed. That's why when you hear the sermons preach, you ought to, if it, if it doesn't hit you today, put it in the refrigerator. Sooner or later, it's going to, it's going to, uh, you, you're going to need it. Now concerning God's previousness, 85 miles south of the island of Sicily, which was just off Italy. Yes, and 100 and 80 miles north and east of the African coastline. God, the maker of heaven and earth, when he created everything, put an island out there in the Mediterranean, and they called it Malta. This little island was 18 miles long and 8 miles wide. 1,000 years before Christ came, God allowed uh, this island to be colonized by the Phoenicians. And then 218 years before Christ was born, God allowed this island to be captured by the Romans. Augustus established a Roman governor there. He settled this island with veterans and their families. Yeah, he did. And in Paul's day, this island was known for its prosperity and its residential architecture. Mm -hmm. The natives on this island spoke a Phoenician dialect, though many probably knew Latin and Greek. And by the way, the name of this island 
Malta means refuge. Other words, God a long time ago, long before Paul was born, long before Paul's great, 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 great were born, put an island out there in the water. He knew that the day would come where the mighty apostle on his way to Rome would get caught up in a storm and that he would need refuge. Mm, he knew, oh Lord, that trouble would break out. What did he do? He went ahead of Paul and he made a way. The Lord told me to prophesy and tell somebody today that the way is already made. Oh, Lord. I know you're waiting on God to work it out. But I'm here to tell you, while you're trying to figure it out, he's already worked it out. He worked it out a long time ago. Oh, Lord. Light moves 186,000 light years per second. Am I right about that? Oh, God. How do you think God had to time that star for the wise men, to, for the shepherds to see it on the night that Jesus was born? The star didn't just shine that night, but God set everything in array, in array. And when the time was right, they looked up and saw a star. The wise men saw the star and they followed the star. Well, I'm here to tell you that that same God, he knew that the storm would come up and that Paul would be in trouble. So he set a refuge for him in the sea and when the ship was almost destroyed they swam for it got to Malta and when they got out there thank God that the land had already been colonized thank God for the Phoenicians thank God that the Romans 218 years prior conquered the Phoenicians. Thank God that Augustus had put a Roman governor there. You know, Paul had Roman citizenship. Y'all don't hear me. Thank God that the Lord had already put people there that would be kind to them. And when they swam to shore, they found out that the Lord had already gone ahead of them and that the Lord had already made a way Somebody need to praise him because the way is all already made. Somebody need to get glad because it's already made. I know what you're saying. I don't see it any way, but that ain't nothing. Paul didn't either. They didn't even know where they were going. But I thank God that the Lord knew. Sometimes in life, you don't know whether you're going or coming. But if you keep your hands in the Lord's hand, God will bless you to get there. The Lord will. He will provide. Yes. Yes. Mother, Mother Withrow, we're praying for her. I got word that she lost her granddaughter. But I want you to know, Mother, God saw it before it happened. And his power, look at her standing back there, getting up on her feet. The power of the Lord will see you through. Can I get a witness? Do I have anybody here who know that God is able to see you through? Lord, Keisha, there's a surgery coming your way, but the Lord is God. He has the surgeon 
He's got the surgeon's hand in his hand. He's got your life in his hand. And everything that the Lord promised, it will come to pass. your hands and declare I'm headed for Rome and the devil can't stop me the devil can't block me until I reach Rome yeah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus he set it up he made a way and look at the devil. Paul went to work. Paul went to work. I'm closing now. I can see him now doing his part. Don't you respect people who carry their own load? He was doing his part. He gathered this wool. He gathered the sticks. Hallelujah. Doing his part. And out of nowhere, won't the devil try to mess it up? Out of nowhere, there was a viper, a poisonous snake that latched on to him. Where soon as it latched on to him, locked its fangs in Paul's hand. Thank God that Paul didn't give it a second thought. He shook it off. He shook it off. I wish I could get somebody to stop thinking about it. Stop fretting. Stop worrying. Shake it off. Ah, shake it off. Lord. Woo. Gotta look at somebody and say, neighbor, you worry too much. Stop all that worrying and shake it off. Shaking it off.
in the head say yeah gotta close this thing but you got to shake it off and when you shake it off you got to get back to living again you know what it's like there's some people they know about some things that have happened to you they know about some things that are embarrassing things that you've gone through and they're they're standing there they're looking at you they are watching you they are looking at you they are waiting for it to kill you the people they were looking at Paul waiting for him to swell up waiting for him to die the Bible said he prepared a table before me in the presence of all my enemies they've been waiting for you to go down they've been waiting for you to fall but thank God that the Lord God Almighty he's on your side Somebody praise him. Woo! Just, just look at him. You don't have to touch him. You don't have to touch him. But you don't just whisper to somebody tell him, you know that thing that happened to me. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I did? I shook it off. That's why I still got my shout. That's why I still have my smile. Yeah, you heard right. Yeah, you heard right. That beast did get hold of me. But instead of me giving in, instead of me letting the devil define me, I decided that I'm gonna keep on keeping on. Yeah! Yeah, I got divorced, but I decided that I'm gonna shake it off. Yes, I lost a loved one. Yes, I had to file bankruptcy. You may say, yeah, 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 yes. 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 Yes, to all these things. But you know why I'm standing here smiling? Because I shook it off. The bad press, I shook it off. The untrue news stories, I shook them off. All that stuff. And when I finished, and they saw that it couldn't kill me, then they changed their mind. They said, man, we thought that Dyke had got him, or Nemesis had gotten him. We thought that he was a murderer, and he survived the seas. But vengeance suffered him not to live. But when they saw that it didn't get him, then they said, no, he's a god. So Paul said, now, I can't let him think I'm a god either. So the chief man, on the island. His daddy got sick. Publius. His daddy got sick. He had a fever. See, the islanders, the, the Maltese people, were very susceptible to a digestive condition that came from infected goat's milk. The milk was bad. It is suspected. The milk, because it was bad, his fever shot sky high. And he suffered with dysentery and all kinds of diarrhea, blood and everything. It was, it was bad. Paul went in and looked at him. And to show that he was not a god, 
but that he served the true and living God. The Bible says he laid his hands on him and he did something that no God would do. What's that? God's in their role as God, God's don't pray. Because if you are God, you don't need to pray. Because you got the power. The fact that he prayed. Who do you pray to? You pray to God. Said that, I'm not a God. I'm a man. But I serve the true and living after having shaken it off. See, you know what he could have done? He could have allowed himself to get better that the snake bit him. Now, he wouldn't have spiritually been in a place where he could pray. So you have to watch it. See, when you're going through, you can't get better. Because you never know when God may call upon you. Missionary, minister. So you can't, you, you got no, you got no, you, you can't, you can't, you, there's no time for you to get better. See, because this man's daddy was dying. So I, I, I already got Paul fixed because I've told him he's going to Rome, but I hadn't made a promise to Populus's dad. This man was dying, and there was a whole bunch of sick folk on the island of refuge. And, and, and while you're on your way, I want to heal them too. But I, but I need you to be in a special place. This is why the attitude of the believer, see, it's very important because you never know when God is going to call on you. And you ain't got time to go somewhere and pray six months of resentment off of you before you can help somebody else. Man laying there dying, he ain't got time to go find everybody he's upset with and say, please forgive me. I just want to get right with you. By the time he finished all that, the man would have died. Paul walked in laid his hands on him and prayed for him. And the Bible says, and healed him. And healed him. Luke being the doctor. Knowing when you look at the totality of Luke's writings, you know Luke knew that God healed him. Through Paul. When you look at the totality of Luke's writings, who wrote the book of Acts. And when that man got healed, the word went out everywhere. Everywhere. Next thing you know, outside the door, there was a hospital. All them sick folk who wanted to be healed. And the Lord healed every one of them. And he healed them because he had a servant who had the right perspective. He knew how to take things in stride. He took the storm in stride. He took the serpent in stride. He shook it off and kept on gathering. He got on with his life. One of the worst things, and I'm getting ready to pray for a believer, is when Satan isolates you. You're going through so you stay home. You're suffering some things, so can't nobody reach you on the phone. Now you he got you by yourself, and your mind is its own echo chamber. The devil is saying all kind of stuff to you. The saints don't care about me. Nobody's thinking about me. This ain't right. I think I ought to take my life. Them people don't like me. I can tell. And the devil is doing, oh, he's just dancing in your head. When you don't even understand, you're saying to yourself, nobody calls me. But the Bible says, these are they who separate themselves. No, you, the devil will have you to separate yourself. And then you blame everybody else for not getting in touch with you. But you separated yourself. Say, well, didn't nobody check on me. And one thing about it, you knew at 11 o'clock where you could find everybody. Say, I, 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 I'm always moved. At people who tell me, I've been trying to get up with you. What? What? Try, get up with who? Patrick, wouldn't the easiest man in, in Raleigh to get up with? Because if you can't find me nowhere else, you know where I'm going to be on Sunday morning. And Thursday night. Hallelujah. Instead, that man 
Let it go. He didn't let it. He didn't concentrate on it. He didn't even, he didn't even take time to bandage his wound. The hour was too urgent. The Lord told me to pray today. The word of the Lord is corrective as well as encouraging. Some people have been encouraged today and thank God for you. You continue in the vein. But there are others today that this word is a word of correction because you've been trying to figure it out. You've been trying to figure it out. You haven't shaken it off. You're consumed by it. You're Tamar. The story closes with Tamar being in derision. Being a lifelong victim. Don't you be a victim. Someone asked me the other day, now watch me kill my own, can somebody kill my own altar call? I do that a lot. Somebody asked me the other day, he says, how do you feel about reparations? I said, reparations for what? He said, slavery. Reparations. I said, what do you mean? Don't you, do you feel that you deserve a reparations check? I said, me? Yeah. Yes. I asked him, why? Why do I deserve a check? Well, you know, Black folk were slaves. I said, I've never been a slave. My mother was never a slave. I said to someone else, your mother was never a slave. Now, those to whom the 40 acres and a mule, which was a Republican idea, if you study your history. And it were Democrats who blocked it. If you study your history. Go study your history. Those to whom it was promised, they should have kept their promise. But just as the statute of limitation run out on everything else, how are you gonna justify that? You went to college. If you didn't go because you didn't want to, you were educated. If you didn't do go, why didn't you? Did you go to school? Why didn't you? You have children. Your sons and daughters have been educated. All kinds of opportunities have come our way. Oh, I'm telling you something. So now if you feel like you deserve one, then fight for yours. But they asked me if that did I. So no, mm -mm. I'm too busy shaking that stuff off and moving toward what God would have me to move toward. See, now, if you want to stay there and wait, and because the longer you wait, the, the, the more bitter you're going to be. Because I got, I, got, I got something to tell you. It ain't going to happen. So you're going to be bitter overnight, or you can shake that off. Don't be that divorced person 20 years later still mad with the person who divorced you. They done gone on with their life. Shake that stuff off. <laughs> Cancer survivors, you can't let every time you sneeze make you think the cancer's come back. Because if that be the case, you, you may not have the disease but it still has you because you didn't shake it off. If you've been incarcerated, whatever, 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 you got to know how to get that stuff out of you. Paul says, there's one thing I do. I'm forgetting the things that are behind me and reaching for the things that are before me. Those who need to shake some things off. Whatever your beast is, yours may be different from someone else's. All of us have had things 
that we have overcome. I've had many, 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 many things that I've had to overcome. And I guess the reason at times, uh, Brother Preacher, that I don't talk about them as much <laughs> is because I actually shook them off. And things you, shook, you shake off don't stay on your mind. You don't fret. You don't play it over and over and over. If it's still alive in you, you hadn't shaken it off yet. Come to the altar if you have something that you want to give to God, that you want to shake off today. Today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. You don't have to tell me what it is. It doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. Because it's not their situation. It's yours. Hallelujah. Bitterness. Bitterness. You got to shake it off. Bitterness. You're bitter about something. Hey, and you know what? I'm not saying that there's not a legitimate reason for it. Actually, I'm actually saying that there is. It, the, those people had a legitimate reason to assume that Paul was going to die. A venomous snake bit him. That's it. Cancel Christmas. Show's over. No doctor, no nothing. So it, that was a, a legitimate reason. Except God. I said, but pastor, you don't know what was said to me. You don't know what was done. I don't have to. It's probably better that I don't. Some people feel that they need to tell the preacher all the details. Sometimes, you, you know, when they finish telling you what's going on, they kill your faith. I believe that God could hear you, but the way you describe that thing, man, I don't know. You might should have just let me pray when I, before I came down. Because we're all people. We're all human. We're all, we're all human. None of us can hear everything and it not affect us. Dear Jesus, your word says that we're to fret not ourselves because of unbelievers. To fret is to let a thing play over and over and over and over in our mind. No matter how legitimate or how illegitimate it may be, you said for us not to do it. And Father, we come to the altar today. We come declaring that we will not another day be a victim to that venomous beast that latched on to our hand. We come today to declare that we will get back to gathering sticks. Gathering wood to get on with our lives. Hallelujah. And Lord, we, pr we, we, we pray that you'd anoint us so, not that people will look at us and assume that we are a God, but that they will look at us and know by our reaction that God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul showed them through prayer that he was not a God, but that God was with him. Father, we know that you're with us. So right now, Lord, we give it up. We shake it off. We release it. We release it. Whatever it is, come on, saints. Release it right now. Whatever it is. May not be able to tell anybody. No one may know. I hear rape in my spirit. I hear incest in my spirit. 
Somebody's been through some things that have been too horrible to even talk about. God said, let it go. God says, let it go. Release it. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake implies action. Shake implies that it will not go quietly. Shaking it off implies that it won't want to leave. You got to cast it out. You got to tell that devil. You got to tell that thing. Loose him. Loose my mind. Loose my heart. Loose my spirit. Loose, loose, loose. Loose, loose, loose. Loose. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm going to sleep good tonight. Get out of here. No more nightmares. Get out of here. No more fear. Get out of here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I survived. I came out on the other side. Hallelujah. I had to swim for my life. But the Lord took care of me. I'm free. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Now throw your hands up and begin to receive God's healing. Receive the Lord's healing. Receive the Lord's healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We receive your healing. We receive your deliverance. We receive yokes being destroyed. We receive, we receive. We receive, oh God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear the Holy Ghost. I hear the Holy Spirit. As with Paul, so will it be with you. No swelling. No harm. And you're not going to fall dead. That means totally unaffected. From this day forward, you will be totally unaffected by that beast. Praise God that the effects are gone. If you believe God, if you believe God, if you believe God, you've given that thing to him. Maybe it was a racial incident. Maybe you have trouble loving people who don't look like you. Whatever case may be, that guy hurt you. That peace officer didn't do you right. You can't carry a grudge on that thing forever. I was talking to someone the other day, and they were all upset with a politi certain political figure. I said, don't let him take you to hell now. I said, well, I hate so-and-so. I said, oh, don't go to hell. ain't worth going to hell over. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Don't lose your anointing. Y'all better hear me. Better hear me. Don't lose your anointing because it ain't worth it. Because trust me, that nothing that you can say or do is going to affect that person one way or the other. And there you go, bound yourself, losing your own joy. The devil is a liar. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you today have shaken it off and given it to the Lord, then you can go to your seats. Praise him, the Lord.